There are, there are a lot of different um, goals that different people have for exoplanets. Um, one thing the public really wants to see is an Earth twin, a planet like Earth orbiting its star at a temperature where liquid water might be stable and where life might develop. So what I'm trying to understand is which of the exoplanets that we are finding with, with the Kepler mission might be rocky like Earth. Which of them could be places where a human could stand. Once planets get to be about one and a half Earth radii, which corresponds to roughly five times the mass of Earth in, in stony iron composition, there's maybe something that causes such massive rocks to start accumulating the gas in which they are embedded. Planets that are larger than one and a half times the size of the Earth, well, none of them are rocky that we've found so far. People are thinking about how to use existing telescopes and design new telescopes in ways that will reveal the chemistry of exoplanet atmospheres. We're looking for signatures that are more likely biological in nature than geological. So for instance, um, oxygen gas, O2, um, is, uh, is easy to produce biotically, a bit harder to make geologically, but not impossible. What people are looking for is atmospheric chemistries that are um, energetically disfavored. And what I mean is that you would have to do work to, um, to have that exact mix of chemicals in that atmosphere. If you have an atmosphere that requires work to maintain, requires somebody to be breathing uh, carbon dioxide into it, say, that's a sign that there might be life there. So, so now we know that planets are everywhere, which means that I think the, the next big question is, how many of those planets get basic biology? How many of them get microbial soup like we had on the early Earth? While I think that studying the atmospheres of exoplanets is, is great and, and something that we clearly need to be doing, there's another thing we need to do, which is more carefully investigate the potentially habitable worlds in our own solar system, in our own backyard. So I'm designing a mission to go to Enceladus and fly through the plume and measure the chemistry of plume material to see if there's anything that looks like life. I was a writer. Uh, I wanted to write a science fiction story about the apocalypse that was coming in 2012 and I wanted it to be scientifically accurate. So I did a three week summer course in astronomy as research and preparation for my novel. And I learned about dark matter. I liked that there was this really big mystery about the universe that scientists didn't know. You know, Stephen Hawking didn't know the answer. Neil deGrasse Tyson didn't know the answer. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm kind of a smart kid. Maybe I'll figure it out. I read like all the NASA articles that I could get my hands on, subscribed to space weather lists, and did this um, from the time I was 14, which is when I took that summer class, uh, up through college, um, where I took my first college level astronomy course, and it just, it just clicked with me. Um, and then uh, the way I got into exoplanets was that um, at that time, the Kepler Space Telescope was launching and the head of our undergraduate program was involved in that. So uh, I thought I'd try it out for a year and see what happened. <laughs>